While it may be presumptuous to call my own game good, I'm only really doing that because I'm comparing it to the other games I've seen being produced about, like, you know, the Grimace and that kind of stuff. I wanted to do my best to try and avoid making the very typical walking around an area and collecting objects, like we've seen before in many different types of horror games. And that's totally fine. Like, if that's the type of game you want to make, that's nothing wrong with that. I just think that I wanted to make something that's more, uh, interesting. A bit more developed in terms of its gameplay and actually having some kind of gameplay loop and formula that's at least halfway decent. But the namesake was chosen simply because I literally did not have a name for this game and I wasn't going to name it something like The Grimace Shake Terror or something like that. I just wanted to have a silly name and a stupid game because I mean, oh, come on, it's Grimace is a horror game. I mean, everyone knows it's going to be stupid. So you might be wondering, why is this video so long? Why is it not just a few minutes long if I'm just talking about a Grimace game I made? Well, if you just want to play the game, you can play it down in the description. I've left a link to the itch.io page and the game job page, whichever one you prefer. And instead, if you want to hang around and watch the video, I want to go over the whole game's process of being made. How exactly I got from point A to point B and how this beautiful little creation came to light. Naturally, of course, I'm going to break it down into sections to make it a bit easier to consume, so if there's anything in particular you want to know about, just check in the timestamps. But if you plan to watch from the very beginning, then let's get started with the design phase, since that is, well, where most games begin. So honestly, this wasn't even something I was going to make. Like, I hadn't even thought about making something like this really at all. Um, but what happened was that I was, you know, having dinner one day with my family and, um, my brother asks me <laughs> when I'm showing him Grimace Shake memes, he's like, why don't you make a Grimace Shake horror game? And it's like, you know, all things considered, not a terrible idea, but at the same time, I'm going to have to move really fast because internet trends move at the speed of light. So I didn't end up getting really in time for the meme. The meme started dying and stuff like that way before I released the game. But you know what? I don't really mind. I know the meme is long dead after, especially by the point this video comes out. But sometimes at a certain point, when I got through development, I realized, hey, maybe it's best to just make the game better rather than just making a, essentially a shitpost. So originally, I was just going to have a long corridor where you would have to just walk down it using pre-rendered images. And occasionally you'd come to a pipe and you'd have to find which one of the two pipes you'd have to go through via drinking the Grimace Shake. The game was originally going to be very simplistic by just having some scary Grimace model, but I actually decided to not make a Grimace model because I realized that having some cheap jump scare with some happily drawn animation that I cannot do right because I don't know animation would look terrible. So instead I opted for other strategies to make it better. But the concept of the main game boils down to this. You're stuck in the McDonald's play place area, and you have to escape for its, like, labyrinth-like maze. You have your Grimace Shake drink, and you also have your gamepad. The gamepad lets you play a little miniature digital Gim Grimace game based on the actual official Grimace game that came out for Grimace's birthday when they were actually doing the promotion. Like, the official McDonald's actually put up a GBA game that I believe can actually run on official Game Boy Advance, like Game Boy... Game Boys? Yeah, I think so. And I thought it looked stupid. I thought it was like, you know, great looking. I mean, when I say stupid, I mean that in the best way possible, by the way. So when I break down the game itself, I'm pretty much looking at, you have two objects that you can use for different reasons, and you have to escape the maze while avoiding Grimace in different ways. If you stay in one place for too long, he catches you. If he's down a corridor and you walk down that corridor, he catches you. And if he's making noise and you look away from him and or approach him or like look at your gamepad or anything like that, he catches you. And of course, if you chose the wrong pipe, something that actually stayed around from the original concept, that would also kill you. The difference here was you had to use your gamepad to play the little miniature Game Boy style game to actually find which pipe to go into. Which in the final product, honestly, is what tends up taking most of your time is just trying to basically get past those little miniature levels. I only initially had one screen to look at for the whole game. But from testing, I found out this was kind of boring, which is understandable considering there was originally going to be 25 pipes you had to get through before you could finish the game. Now there's eight. You only have to get through eight pipes to finish the game. But how exactly does this all work together? So like, how does it all, you know, fit into one like kind of neat package? Well, that's going to bring us over into the gameplay creation section. So let's move on to the next. As I described before, there are two items you can use, and you're also stuck in this maze. The way the game works is that the more sips of the drink you take, you know, the Grimace Shake, the more difficult the game gets. Which I think is a nice way to increase difficulty considering you have to drink it 
or you die from dehydration. Let's just assume the protagonist is in the same kind of position that a lot of uh, horror game protagonists are, where they run for two seconds and they become absolutely breathless. Except here it's dehydration. <laughs> for the gamepad itself, which I said takes up a lot of time of your actual playthrough, I designed one initial screen to essentially be the layout, and I'm basing it around games like Donkey Kong Jr., and also the original Grimace birthday game, but also for the movement I was inspired by a game called Scoop Kick, which of course is derivative of Burger Time, but you know, it's the thing I'm thinking of because I think that game's cool. It's a simplistic enough game that involves walking up and down ladders and walking left and right, and I wanted to keep that same kind of movement system here. And I know that there's a lot of arcade games that did this type of thing as well, but this was the one I thought of when actually thinking of the inspiration to make the miniature games gameplay. In the end, though, we ended up having four different layouts, which actually get repeated once after you complete all four levels, which gives you a layout of eight total, for, you know, one for each floor. Upon the request of my brother, I made it so that there would be a palette swap in the second set of rooms, just to make sure people didn't get confused that the game wasn't looping forever, which apparently still kind of became a thing. People still thought it was endless, so maybe I should add something that actually shows you which floor you're on, or like how many floors you got left to go, or something like that. On top of that, with the amount of sips of Grimace Shake you take, the grimacing actually becomes more and more intense. After one sip, Grimace will start appearing in hallways, and you have to basically look out for him, not run into him by looking physically. You can just about barely see him sitting in a corridor sometimes. After three sips, he switches to a listening mode, where you now have to listen for his sound effects of his little groans and moans. And if he's making any noise at all, don't turn away from him nor look away in any capacity. That means including your gamepad or walking down the corridor. And after five, it becomes a mix of both. Now both are active and it makes it very, very difficult. By the time you take five sips, you're probably at least a few tubes in. So you're doing decently at that point anyway. What's actually funny for a bit of trivia, honestly, when it comes to my like past making of games, this is kind of like a mixture between two games I'd made before, where one of them back in, I think both of them, Back in 2017, I had a game called Endurance, which is just very mediocre now, where it had the same kind of concept of like turning to get different things for different places. It also had the little miniature game you had to play while playing the rest of life. Though in that one, it was the whole screen got taken up by the game instead of having like a dedicated little miniature screen. It didn't look as good and it was very prototypey, I guess you could say for this, which would eventually become Grimace. But there was no moving in that game in terms of like walking down corridors and that kind of stuff. That was a lot more like another game I made called Desolate Clone Catastrophe. That had walking was like a rail shooter type thing. Very different gameplay wise from this type of game and you know obviously the Grimace game is a lot closer to Endurance I would say but Desolate Clone Catastrophe definitely had more of the 3D factor which is more present in the Grimace game. But that's enough about the basic gameplay layout and past memories. Let's move on to something more substantial, like the actual models. I must prefacize this section with that I am not a 3D modeler. I am very beginner level when it comes to stuff. So that's why a lot of the graphics here are not that good. If anything, basic lighting is what helps the game look even remotely decent. But I'm still proud at the very least with what I managed to make within my limited ability. Because even though I lack a lot of ability, doesn't mean I can't at least look up things and how to make basic objects and that kind of stuff. And of course just kind of freeform and hope for the best with certain things. When it came down to the main game, the entire thing pretty much takes place within this corridor. That's basically everything. The entire game works via pre-rendered graphics that are then just, you know, put into the game and rendered as pictures. But this is what it actually looks like inside the editor itself. It's nothing too spectacular, most of the models are very, very basic, but a lot of the sheen and colouring and that kind of stuff made a big difference to make it actually something not as terrible as it could have been. On top of that, because it originally only really had one room type to make a very, like, obviously this, you know, has some inspiration for the forbidden word back rooms now on the internet because it's so overdone, I suppose. But I can't really help that just because it's pre-rendered graphics, I couldn't possibly render like 200 different types of rooms and you could say, well, why didn't you just make it 3D fully then? Well, that's because I'm using RPG Maker. And while that's technically possible in RPG Maker, this is a lot simpler than bothering to do that in RPG Maker. In terms of the room's layouts, I simply just put together a few objects in each room. 
I pretty much had five objects total. And that would include stuff like just little banners of different colors, you know, very simplistic triangles that I just smushed together and put together. You know, nothing too special. But I think it goes a long way when you can kind of create some colorful banners to make stuff really pop out. Especially considering I chose three colors that represented the tubes, just because I thought that would be a nice way to kind of clear up some different types of color. Of course, we've got the McDonald's logo, which just ends up being two arches that are just slapped together and joined at the hip, as seen via the wireframe. There was really no attempt to make an actual M <laughs> to make it actually good looking. I don't even think it looks like the actual M. It's just, it's yellow and kind of archy shape. That's good enough. People can identify it. And of course, you got to have a classic balloon because what kind of party isn't complete without a balloon with a really badly made string and essentially uh, a ball shape that was just stretched out slightly. I mean, obviously I made things very, very shiny and reflective, and of course I don't know how to change the actual reflective map, so it's just trees and stuff, despite the fact that makes no sense. Next up we got the little party hat, because every party must need party hats. And these were great, because I could just throw them on the floor, turn them around, just shove them anywhere. And lastly, in the same category really, trash. Literally just a ball, I took a box and subdivided it and just stretched it out and applied a very basic texture to it. Couldn't ask for anything better. And of course, the last thing to make each room unique was all the different types of doors. Needed a bunch of different types of doors just to make everything super unique. I really like how I ended up making some of them more simplistic looking and then some of them really kind of weird. Honestly, my favorite one has to go to the one that looks like some kind of weird jagged rib cage, which I literally just took this default monkey head that uh, Blender has and made some shape holes of it. Turned out great and that's all that matters to me. But these objects were great because I could just fill in the rooms with them and just make them like ever so slightly more unique. And that's all I needed to make it interesting. And originally, like, none of this type of stuff was even planned. I mean, as you know, the original concept, this is what they actually looked like in the original concept in the 3D rendering. It's still in this scene. It's still there. And honestly, I didn't even realize this. The files for, like, the pre-rendered little part here is still in the actual final game. I didn't even It's under Z-Test. Figures, I should have looked. But you don't actually get to see this tube animation part because that doesn't actually happen in the rendering. It was the same setup as the actual final game, it was just that you were going to be able to walk forward physically, which was kind of stupid in the end. And of course, over here, we have the little animations that were used to make the actual objects when you drink and you take your extra gamepad. These were very simplistic and just designed to kind of show with the camera. Now, obviously, naturally, if you pick up a drink and try to drink it, it's in your vision, but like, it's not really in a camera's type vision. It would be below the camera. So I had to kind of like raise it up to make it like, whoa, it's going to your ward your mouth. But the gamepad was a lot simpler because it just needed to sit in front of the screen and just kind of go up quickly so you could use it. And honestly, it turned out pretty nicely, the gamepad. It looks very simplistic, honestly. And I based it off a of Game Boy Advanced SP specifically because that's the Game Boy I had growing up. I mean, I've had other Game Boys as well, but that's the main one I played. And of course, the infamous Shake itself. I mean, what's actually funny about this is that I didn't include the cream in the end, and I only realized that later on, but I'd already pretty much done everything. But I looked and I put in some cream on top, and while it doesn't look that bad, I didn't really care to include it because I honestly think what I had looked pretty darn fine. So I went with what I had and didn't bother re-rendering everything. Simple but effective, maybe. Or maybe I should have made the cream look better instead of just literally an orb. But hey, what can I say? It, it is what it is. It's a very simplistic game. And lastly, there's the main menu area, which basically obviously has the spinning little, the little spinning dude for the uh, Grimace Shake on the main menu. Which, once again, all of these frames are pre-rendered, so if you look in the files, you can actually see the entire animation just one after the other rendered out. That's what took the most time. Rendering out stuff? I mean, okay, no, bug testing, that kind of stuff the most time. When it came to rendering, that still takes a while, even if it's very simplistic animations. It's just how it is. I think it's a fine way to end off the uh, 3D modeling section. Very simplistic models, but very fun. Nothing too special. I mean, honestly, if I went all out with the modeling, maybe the game could have got a bit more like kind of pizzazz and that kind of stuff. But considering I had to work at speed to make the game not essentially come out like a couple of months after the meme had already died, <laughs> instead of like maybe a week or so, maybe it's best I didn't. Initially, when I was going to do pixel sprites, I was going to do them myself. I can't do that because I suck at art. But you know what I do have? I got a friend who can do good pixel art and good art in general. My friend Ari, otherwise known as Karate Red Online, actually has helped me in previous games as well. One of my games, Vexation, Handcrafted Hell, he made an entire level's artwork for me, and I think that level looked spectacular. And I know he's done good pixel art before, so I made sure to ask him 
can he do some good pixel art for me? And in two slash three, like two hours, I think it was like two hours, dude produced the entire pixel art I needed him to. And that was awesome. I was literally on call as he produced them. And, and it, it, the magical journey everyone took seeing the pixel sprites come to life. Of course, there's the very basic stuff where you have like a brick in the background, which you know, makes up the entire texture of a background. And they have that stuff fine. It honestly, originally, didn't look that good as a single brick, he said. But, and I had to agree. But when you put it all together, bam, it looks nice. Of course, there was the ropes, the spikes, and the little floor. And what's funny is that originally I asked him to make an enemy rather than a spike thing. But when I realized I didn't really want to do collision, per se, and just make it so that if you're on the same floor as the spikes, you just die, that's what I decided to go with. And of course, stuff like a single spike and a single block and a single bit of rope can be used indefinitely just to create more and more. Unless we forget the very impressive looking pixel shake for the actual Grimma shake. This thing looks spectacular. I mean, personally, I mean, maybe I'm a bit of biased, but to be fair, they're not my sprites. But they look very nice. And in fact, they actually have the cream, which my shake doesn't have. <laughs> maybe that's why my shake kind of looks like it's death. But, you know, maybe that's kind of the point. But in the game, they look spectacular. And it all came together nicely. And best to last, of course, is Grimace himself. Grimace has a few different poses involving him idling. His walking animation where he just looks like the happiest chap ever known to man. Look at that little, look at that little face. He's just a little guy. <laughs> Pity he's trying to kill you, but you know, that's, that's besides the point. In the game, in the little mini game game, he is the cutest adorable thing ever. He's got his climbing animation, which is just literally flipped as he walks up. And yes, it was fully acknowledged that a tiny little rope with a climbing animation made no sense. But fuck it, it's hilarious. And the best thing ever, the death sprite. Which obviously, you know, we just had to figure something to have him die quickly and then come back. Because that's the way the game works. And one of our friends suggested, why not just make the family guy death pose? And so, that's what happened. And the great thing is... Grimace is actually kind of the shape of Peter Griffin. So, just get a Peter Griffin reference, work with that, boom, Grimace is dead. And that's also when we discovered that Grimace has been in Family Guy twice. Completely different looking in each occasion, and one of them he kind of looks like he's a Grimace horror game character. What is this? Why does he look like that? But I had a lot of fun seeing these sprites come to like fruition, especially considering I started with them lucky looking like this. Very basic ass blocks because that's just the way I normally work when it comes to games and how, I imagine, quite a few people work when it comes to games at the beginning. And the fact that this was derived from the Game Boy game, you know, style wise, but still ended up looking completely its own, that was what was perfect. This was a great little sprite adventure. And honestly, because the sprites end up holding the game together so well, it kind of becomes the front and center of the game. Sure, you walk around in between little bits and stuff like that, but a lot of the time you have to play the game because that's the main objective. You can't escape without playing the little game. Well, unless you, you know, take the time to guess like 50 times or 8 times, but, you know, it's going to be a lot more of an 8 because you're going to lose <laughs> by guessing a bunch of times in a row. And I wish I had more to say on the sprites. I really do, but like, there isn't much I can really say apart from that. And I think that's a nice little section just to say, good job on the sprites. It worked out perfectly. Moving on now to... Ooh, sound effects. This is where my time to shine really was. So for all zero people out there asking me, where did you get the sound effects from? How, how were they done? Well, I made them all myself. I've kind of gotten a lot more used to doing that. I used to just use sound effects from libraries and that kind of stuff. Maybe RPG Maker default sound effects. But I had a lot more fun making my own sound effects when I made Vexation, or sorry, making Vexation. I not done, not out, it won't be for a good long while yet. And so I decided to do the same thing for this game because I didn't really want to make any generic sound effects people could pick up on. So I wanted to make my, all my own sound effects. Between the little Game Boy opening, which was actually from my actual Game Boy being open and closed, the drinking sound effect, which is literally me taking a sip of a milkshake I made specifically so I could get a milkshake slurping sound effect, Stuff like that just made me very happy to just basically make very stupid little funny things like that. And I want to share some of them with you just so you can kind of get an idea of what they actually sound like. So here, for example, is, as I aforementioned, the schmoop, the drinking sound effect. Uh, joy, ASMR warning, I suppose? Please don't tell me you enjoyed that because that was just me taking a drink. We also have a bunch of walking sound effects, which naturally was me walking across my room. And I think this turned out pretty nicely. Take a listen.
gives me like FNAF 4 vibes, you know, with like the later in the bit, uh, in Night 5 with Nightmare walking around. Boy, I can't escape this game being like FNAF in some ways, can I? It really does have some like parallels in terms of its, uh, <laughs> in terms of its looks and kind of stuff like that. But I suppose that's what happens when you make pre-rendered graphics games. This is the new era, the post-FNAF era. Not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but you know, escaping that kind of chokehold can be difficult. I prefer to find my own way to not have games be compared to other games, but I feel like you're always going to get some kind of comparison anyway, so I wouldn't really worry about that if you're making your own type of games like this. There's also, of course, the Grimace sound effects, and there's quite a few of these. Between the different types of yells, now, these are not the jump scare noise, these aren't the screeches. So take a listen to some of these, because I actually do think they're quite hilarious, because it's just me making noises again. <laughs> And following that, we do have the actual screech jump scare sounds. And I did make these myself using hand techniques over my mouth in certain ways and producing really weird screams. And of course, you know, some tiny bit of editing just to make them a bit more echoey. Jump scare warning. And also I will reduce the volume, just make sure it's not too intense. But just so you're warned, take a listen. And of course, let's not forget the little miniature game sound effects, which are all bit crushed, just random things. I, I couldn't tell you what half of them are. <laughs> I can't remember, but they're all bit crushed, so I can't remember. To take a quick listen to basically all the different sound effects that that game, little mini game, has to offer. And I would say apart from that, there's basically a collection of miscellaneous sound effects. You know, one-off sound effects that are used for certain things. Like breathing, or switching item, or main menu control, that kind of stuff. Small, small stuff, just little things. Take a listen. I honestly think if you're a indie developer, you can make your own sound effects. Like, you don't have to abide by just a sound effect library. And honestly, if you don't enjoy doing sound effect work in your games, like trying to find the right sound effect to find, to like put in a specific thing, because it like, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, just make your own. Because you know, if you are making your own sound effects, you're making it specifically for something. You know what you're making will sound exactly what you need it to do. And there's no harm in mixing that. There's no harm in mixing some sound effects you make with certain sound effects you find online. No problem with that at all. For me, I made the ambient track, actually, because I should probably mention the ambient tracks. There's two of them. One of them is just like a weird humming noise, which is very vibrational, which is just a very slowed down portion of a clip of me talking. And the other one is a crackling noise that plays with the entire thing. Which is, once again, a very slowed down version of me miss messing around with a hula hoops packet. So 
So just kind of go crazy with it and have fun. I'm really interested to see what people make with that. I'm honestly interested, has anyone else actually done that? Or do you know any other games that use sound effects that were just made by one random person doing <laughs> random effects? But I think that's enough of the sound effect stuff of that. Because I don't want to bore people all day with different types of, like, random sound effects that I made <laughs> using my mouth and objects around me. So let's swiftly move on to the next section. So you might be wondering what the actual reception of the game was. Like, how did it do? Is it worth it making a Grimace horror game? Um, yeah, sure, it was fine. Like, a couple of people saw it. I must. I saw a video on it and I was like, yay, video made of my game! Which, you know, for small developers like me, that's that that's everything. That's what we love to see. We love to see people playing that kind of stuff. And maybe this video will actually end up boosting it and getting a lot more attention for it. Or maybe it will just be like another video where it gets like a few hundred views. Because that's just the way things are sometimes. Either way, it doesn't really matter specifically because of the fact when it comes down to it, it may have not gotten the gigantic amount of reception to become the next big indie game because it's never going to. Even if I was one of the few Grimace games that did get played by all the YouTubers, which ended up only being like a three minute game, it doesn't matter because those games aren't going to really translate into giving you an audience. They're just going to enjoy the meme and move on. I made this purely because I just wanted to have a bit of fun. And also because I hadn't made a game in a while. Simply because of, you know, IRL stuff and being busy and this kind of stuff. Like, it happens, you know? This was a great way for me to get back into the swing of things. Even if, basically, no one really saw it. But I still think it was worth it. I still had a bunch of fun making it. It was very small and only took really a week to do. I am not the fastest developer. I am very slow. But I try my best to work as much as I can to get stuff done. I'm just not that quick at it. And I do want to do a couple of small changes to it. Probably have a patch, but... With the speed of my internet, it takes a while to re-upload those files, so... I'm gonna wait to see if there's anything else I want to add first before I make those patches. But if you do want to try the game for yourself before the next section, go ahead. Because next up, I'm just gonna show you the whole game in full. Just so if you don't want to play it yourself, you can just basically get an idea of what the whole game's like. And I promise, no jump scares. I actually beat the game and there's no jump scare at the end or anything like that. Yeah, this may be a smaller section, but that's fine because this was just kind of a way to be like, Hey, don't worry about it. Just have fun and make the games. As I just said, I want to show the game in full. So I want to begin to end show the whole game. So I'm no commentary for this. This is just going to be a nice experience. So you can just see the whole game. If you want to see it, that's fine. No problem with me. This is a great way also for me to extend the video's length just because, eh, why not, you know? People like long videos, right? I like long videos, so enjoy!
And that will do us for now. This video may actually not end up being as long as some of my other videos, but I don't really mind that as much because it's more just kind of me just ranting on about the game making process and how this game came to be just with the most random stupid things i'm not the best at explaining things to be completely honest but i don't mind i just like making videos occasionally just to show off what stupid things i'm working on and hopefully the next thing i work on will actually be you know good but if we're judging this by the merits of other grimace games i've seen i'm proud to say that this game is the good grimace shake horror game and hey, if you want to play it for yourself, as I've said, link in the description. I'm also going to leave a link down there for a game you can wishlist, Vexation Handcrafted Hell. I'm probably going to mention this game in every single video until I have a different game which I can promote. <laughs> Just because I need to use whatever I can to get as much promotion for something as possible. When you got no money and you got no resources, you use what you can get. So I do hope you enjoyed, and you know, if you were just kind of scouring around the video to see what you can find on uh, the creation of the game, or just to see a full playthrough of it, that's fine totally too. The video is for your entertainment, not for mine. So thank you for watching, and I will see everyone in the next video, whatever that ends up being, and wherever that ends up being.